Thank you so much for joining us for this Friday's edition of Alaska Weather. I'm Dave Percy, a meteorologist with the National Weather Service, and I'll be hosting today's show. Up first, we've got uh, on the fire danger chart, uh, high fire danger back here uh, along the Yukon and then where the Porcupine River, where they meet back up to the north, over toward the border there. And then it kind of breaks off here and then another high fire danger zone uh, over the northwest there, Noatak Valley, in towards... Uh, actually the northern Selawig Valley possibly here with just a small area actually smaller than what I'm showing there of extreme fire danger up in that area otherwise uh, pretty low very low uh, for the remainder of the state including the southeast coast Corsi Aleutians and for the satellite imagery today you can see a low pressure area pretty weak uh, and dissipating uh, southwest of the Queen Charlotte's but uh, southeast flow bringing uh, keeping it unsettled with a basically upper level low pressure aloft here uh, affecting the southeast coast keeping showers and clouds in across much of the area actually all the way back up into about Yakutat breaking out uh, dry Copper River Basin some clouds here western Prince William Sound that you can see uh, slowly dropping southward and then the building convection here starting out over the eastern interior area from the hills north of Fairbanks there in the White Mountains on down toward Northway into Canada and then convection starting to fire up here further to these more scattered but it will be building throughout the afternoon today and into uh, the evening tonight with uh, a band of moisture mostly clouds passing across the Arctic coast there uh, beginning to develop a little bit but really not much in the way of uh, precipitation today but areas patchy areas of fog really not a bad day up there but uh, lower flying conditions and more wind snow be moving on down over the over the weekend actually coming in later tonight and tomorrow pretty good out here in the west uh, Bristol Bay just uh, really dry with some partly sunny skies there Kodiak Island Alaska Peninsula back up to the Seward Peninsula and then uh, showers starting to develop or clouds building over the Nalado Hills uh, developing into isolated thunderstorms there becoming more scattered and a little more numerous here as you head over toward the border where they began earlier today and again from the uh, eastern uh, interior areas there upper Tanana Valley 40 mile country down to about Northway and Toke showers here across the southeast coast rainfall amounts not too heavy anywhere from uh, the heaviest amounts range from one to a quarter of an inch during the day today or since midnight last night and other areas uh, either didn't get anything at all or had just a few hundredths of an inch, like Petersburg just picked up two hundredths of an inch precipitation, while uh, Kloak had fifteen hundredths, for example, and Cake about two tenths of an inch. And that's about as notable as the precipitation got here for anywhere in the state. Isolated showers there around the Kulski, basically the outer edge of this uh, cloud shield associated with that front here down to the south, just uh, beginning to affect the area there. But basically, uh, variably cloudy, mostly cloudy across the Aleutians with light wind. No storms at all out here in the Bering Sea, just high pressure back up toward the Russian coast. For tonight, ridging eastward there across the North Slope and the Arctic coast. That's uh, ahead of this system. will be dropping southward here late tonight and into tomorrow. Low, weak low pressure over the uh, eastern interior there. Thunderstorms and showers both on the decrease this evening. And... Uh, Dry south central Alaska, south of the Alaska Range. Could be some evening showers over the Talkeetnas. Otherwise, patchy fog possible in Cook Inlet, as well as uh, either side of Kodiak Island, and showers on the decrease here over the Panhandle, especially the central areas. And uh, hanging on in the south there due to upper level low pressure actually associated with that system just to the south. And a chance of rain or drizzle there for the eastern Aleutians. A little bit better chance than what you saw today there as uh, more moisture tries to nudge, nudge northward on the uh, north side of that front. Otherwise, just uh, low clouds, fog, drizzle here over the Bering Sea, light winds, basically east-northeast flow, light winds out over the western Aleutians there. 
no gradient at all. And you can just see the next system beginning to push precipitation field onto the chart uh, late tonight. And that advances a little bit. The front just making the edge of the picture tomorrow afternoon, but really not affecting the western Aleutians, except those winds probably swinging around to the southeast late tomorrow afternoon, picking up about 25 knots or so. And then this system coming down on the Arctic coast, bringing definitely an increase in the wind, snow, especially the eastern areas there of the Arctic coast. Could see gusts uh, tomorrow afternoon, tomorrow night with this sw swinging through as high as 45 miles an hour. Uh, over toward uh, Barter Island and Kaktovik, really east of New Wakes, you'll see the strongest winds, 25 to 35 miles an hour, with the uh, heaviest precipitation over in that area as well. Otherwise, look for uh, increasing rain and snow to the south, mixing with snow and the colder air back to the north. It'll be mostly in the form of snow. Thunderstorms again along this trough here from the eastern interior, right on into the northern Cuscombe Valley, possibly the western Alaska range, uh, but generally a nice day here for south central Alaska. Could be a risk of a shower along the coast range in the afternoon, but uh, mostly sunny skies. Cook Inlet, Manusca, Susitna Valley, Prince William Sound, Kodiak, Bristol Bay, back here between this trough and that system. Pretty nice conditions there with some partly sunny skies at worst. And then low clouds, fog, and drizzle light winds for the Aleutians. Chance of rain now expanding up along the south side of the Alaska Peninsula with this system, staying mostly to the south. And showers again here over the southern southeast coast and increasing here over the northern areas. Batch of moisture sliding southwestward. We'll increase those showers tomorrow afternoon, definitely tomorrow night. The whole area kind of wrapping in to an upper level low, so it looks pretty wet uh, for Saturday night into Sunday. Starting to improve in the afternoon a little bit, leftover moisture here, but still a trough. So uh, decreasing showers in the afternoon, maybe a few sun breaks, and that's about as good as it gets. And then this uh, snow blowing snow up to six inches of new snow on the uh, north slope of the Brooks Range area at the most by Sunday afternoon. Otherwise, lighter amounts back to the west and milder with uh, rain showers possible. Mostly sunny there, no attack. Kobuk Valley areas uh, into Selowick Valley. Chance of showers Norton Sound along this band of moisture which becomes an area of rain and pretty widespread showers and thunderstorms again from uh, about the White Mountains north up to around Eagle and then scattered showers down along the Alaska Range area, but sunshine, south central Alaska, Kenai Peninsula, Cook Inlet, Susitna Valley, Kodiak, a sunny day coming up for Sunday. Chance of showers here lingers along the Alaska Peninsula, and high pressure still controls the Bering Sea, holding that uh, storm back out to the west. And for the uh, low temperatures tonight, 40s to lower 50s over the interior, upper 20s, mid to upper 20s along the Arctic coast, and uh, 40s, lower 40s Aleutians, mid 40s give or take for the panhandle. Highs tomorrow afternoon in the mid to upper 50s there, and 65 to 72 South Central Alaska, the Sitna Valley areas, 65 to or, or 65 to lower 70s again here from uh, Fort Yukon down into the Cuscombe Valley, cooling into the mid 60s along the Yukon Cuscombe Delta, mid 40s for Nunavak Island, upper 30 St. Lawrence Island. Highs barely getting above freezing for the Arctic coast, and uh, lows upper 20s to near 30 for the uh, Sunday morning lows with uh, 45 to 50 here in the central interior, upper 40s to lower 50s, southern Alaska, and for the highs on Sunday afternoon, lower to mid 30s again here, central eastern Arctic coast, warmer back to the west and southwest there. Uh, Kotzebue 51 for the high, 56 in uh, Ambler, otherwise uh, 39 the high for Anantuvik Pass, but Arctic Village would be up to 47, lower 60s there around Fort Yukon. Near 70, northern Cuscombe Valley there from Tanana on down to uh, 65 there at Iliamna. And now, aviation weather around Alaska. Our first flying weather graphics showing good VFR here from uh, the Yukon all the way out to the northern Bering Sea, St. Lawrence Island. And IFR there, uh, central Arctic coast, eastward, and then coming inland, a little bit there to the south over the north slope. Otherwise, uh, Prince William Sound uh, looks like they'll start out IFR tomorrow as well as uh, Bristol Bay off the coast. South side of the Alaska Peninsula, moisture coming up, uh, threatening the, that area with some IFR. Widespread IFR, central western Aleutians, VFR for the Panhandle. And that uh, continues into Saturday. Now some moisture coming in from the northeast, north, else increase marginal VFR over the uh, northern southeast coast there, especially the upslope areas to the north. And uh, marginal VFR, eastern central north Gulf Coast, improving over Prince William Sound. 
and good VFR over the interior with uh, thunderstorms once again developing, scattered uh, here along the Alaska Range. And the White Mountains look like the most, uh, has the greatest chance of seeing a thunderstorm activity tomorrow afternoon. Bering Sea, Pribilofs IFR, Atka Island IFR, kind of ADAC on the edge, IFR for the Western Aleutians. And for Sunday morning, widespread IFR, that uh, cold trough dropping down from the north right up to the crest of the Brooks Range here, possibly spilling over. I think it'll be north along and north of the mountains there across all the North Slope and Arctic Coast, uh, socked in with IFR, socked in with VFR here south of the Brooks Range all the way down to Kodiak Island, but uh, marginal VFR down towards Sitkanak Island with IFR right at the door. And uh, the Pribilofs, Southwest Bering, and all of the Central Western Aleutians IFR for the morning on Sunday. IFR now into the Northern Panel, marginal VFR all the way down toward Dixon Entrance. And that doesn't change much into the afternoon there with IFR across the Gulf up to the nor Eastern North Gulf Coast, Southeast Prince William Sound, and uh, off the coast there, Kodiak Island, and off the coast here, the Alaska Peninsula kind of straddling at both sides with marginal in between. Narrow band IFR here, uh, looks like uh, from the 40 mile country across the Tanaw Valley on out into Norton Sound, north through the Bering Strait, western Arctic coast. Uh, eastern central coast looks IFR even into the afternoon. Lots of IFR out over the Bering Sea, Aleutians, and up towards uh, Nunavak Island. Anatovic looks VFR tomorrow. Good flying weather for Adigan as well, and much of the Brooks Range for Lake Clark and Merrill VFR. And then rainy uh, VFR with uh, some uh, isolated thunderstorms possible in the afternoon. Now, windy, uh, better chance of it going marginal with building moisture and the build, developing clouds in the afternoon there with a chance of thunderstorms. That same trend also for Isabel and Mentasta, VFR becoming marginal in the afternoon. And Tanita, though, good VFR. And Portage starting out marginal, becoming VFR in the afternoon or by afternoon. And Chilkoot and White, uh, VFR, but again, with that moisture coming in from the northeast there out of Canada, going marginal in the afternoon, especially on the northern entrances. And for freezing levels, cold air pushing southward, northerly jet there, 2,000 feet down to the Brooks Range now. Otherwise, about 6,000 feet central and southern interior, 4,000 feet with that upper low there, especially off the southern southeast coast. 6,000 feet here along the eastern Aleutians, Alaska Peninsula. Really not much of a gradient out here over the Bering at all. And icing, moisture sliding on up brings a chance of some icing above about 7,000 feet for the eastern Aleutians. And then moisture coming southward here could be some uh, rime icing above about 3,000 feet, north slope, central eastern Arctic coast. Uh, interior looking pretty well icing free and a chance of some icing here increasing in the afternoon with that moisture coming in from the northeast. And then also the southern southeast coast mixed icing uh, chances there with uh, that upper level low hanging in the area. And for the jet stream, there's that upper level low right there, roughly around the Queen Charlottes, but uh, close enough to keep the southern panhandle unsettled. Uh, good weather here with uh, basically high pressure out over the Bering Sea, but uh, lax flow, this jet coming southward, well, gradually becoming farther to the south over the weekend and the first of next week. 9,000 foot winds, uh, northerlies here, 10 to 20, coming around that high near the Russian coast there. Are stronger winds here, 30, 35 knots coming up toward the eastern Aleutians. Light and variable for the Aleutians, farther out to the west there. And uh, 30, 35 knots, or 20 to 25 knots there for the Arctic coast, even stronger there. About the same out of the west-northwest. And turbulence-wise, moderate chop showing up along the Fox Islands. Arctic coast on down into the Bering Strait. Uh, looks pretty turbulent tomorrow, those northerly winds. Light to isolate the moderate chop to uh, St. Lawrence Island. And otherwise, uh, pretty smooth for the remainder of the state. And after the break, I'll be back with the marine forecasts. Thanks for joining us for another edition of Alaska Weather Facts. I'm meteorologist Dave Snyder, and today I'm privileged to introduce Dr. Uccellini, the director of the United States National Weather Service. Welcome back to Alaska, sir. Thank you, Dave. Glad to be here. Thanks. Uh, prior to be being the leader of the National Weather Service, uh, your work included an extensive look at snowstorms across the northeastern United States. These are the types of storms that can bring some of the country's largest cities to its knees. Uh, tell me a little bit about your fascination with snow. Well, as far back as I can remember, I've, I've always been interested in, in weather, mm -hmm. uh, growing up as a, as a kid in, uh, on Long Island, New York, and was particularly fascinated by uh, snowstorms, um, why they occurred, the distribution of snow was very varied across the entire region, the rain-snow line, 
all those things fascinated me right from the get-go. And um, I was interested in knowing how they worked, um, how the forecast worked, or more often than not, didn't work uh, uh, one way or the other. And that drove me, um, uh, that interest continued to build and um, drove me through high school right into college, uh, wanting to be a meteorologist. Okay, that's a fascinating story, and I think every meteorologist has a weather story like that in some way. Right. Uh, due to Alaska's size and the proximity to the North Pole, sometimes it's difficult to detect and analyze the weather patterns over Alaska. Uh, what's the National Weather Service doing to improve that weather detection? Well, uh, observations uh, in this type of environment is, is a big challenge, uh, whether it's um, from space um, or uh, from what we call in-situ observations from the from the ground or within the systems. Mm -hmm. um, clearly, uh, satellites have been playing an increasing role in providing uh, the big picture, uh, not only from a visual sense and what you see is occurring, um, but also from providing the data for the numerical models that then are used to actually predict the weather. Uh, Alaska is actually pretty well uh, positioned with respect to polar orbiting satellites since mm -hmm. you get a, f um, a, a faster return of those satellites over your particular area. And in fact, the, uh, the polar satellite system is the backbone for the observations that we use in our models, uh, especially our global models, and they're particularly important uh, for observing weather features that affect Alaska. Alaskans live and die by the weather every day. And one of the strategic goals of the National Oceanic and Atmospheric Administration and the National Weather Service is to develop a more weather-ready nation. What does it mean for Alaskans to be weather ready? Well, the, the strategic outcome is based on uh, people being ready, responsive, and therefore resilient to uh, the increasing uh, threats to extreme weather events. Uh, those threats are related to um, not only the nature of the events, but the fact that we're becoming more vulnerable to them as we have more people, more infrastructure uh, that could be um, affected by these events. So we have to ensure that the observations we make for situational awareness, the forecasts we make for people to take the proper responses um, are connected uh, to people's uh, actions, uh, the response to these events, so that uh, they will be more resilient uh, to um, uh, what's uh, facing them. Um, you know, there are Examples with respect to hurricanes, uh, more people living along the coastline takes longer to evacuate. We have to make better forecasts with longer lead times, but we also have to communicate the threats so people will actually take action to avoid those storms. Up here you have, um, as in other parts of the United States, an increasing threat related to fire. Mm -hmm. uh, um, as there are more people living in fire-prone areas, um, we have to ensure that our forecasts are good, uh, that we don't have uh, false alarms that make people not react to uh, uh, the forecast when, in fact, they should. Mm -hmm. um, but we also have to be able to communicate the threat to make sure that we're working with the partners in the emergency management community uh, so that um, communities uh, and right down to individuals will actually take the proper responses in the face of these events. So that's the strategic goal. There are a lot of challenges for us terms of improving forecasts, but also improving our communication skills and linking with the emergency management communities that are actually out there uh, trying to protect lives and mitigate property loss. So a huge partnership effort going forward. Uh, that's, that's one of the important keys for the success of uh, meeting the strategic goal. Okay. Well, one of the things you're talking about was uh, understanding the, the weather information we're getting back from the computers, weather modeling, and you did a lot of work with that in some of your prior, uh, prior positions with the Environmental Prediction Center there, the National Center for Environmental Prediction. Um, what can you tell us about recent improvements in that weather modeling? And you're using uh, the polar orbiters as kind of a, a source of information that started right. that process. Well, you know, first of all, we have to recognize that everything you see you read and hear about weather, climate, or ocean forecasts are all driven by numerical models. Now, mm -hmm. it, it really has been the, uh, the revolution in our forecast process uh, in the last part of, um, of the 20th century. Uh, the success of that numerical enterprise is based on three factors. Big computers, mm -hmm. um, uh, global data, not just local data, but you have to have a global data set, 
and then the models themselves, the science that's behind the models and in running the models um, in an operational mode. So we're working to improve all three of those components. Uh, we um, upgraded our computers last year. We, we're going through another upgrade right, even as I speak. Uh, we'll be upgrading from 200 trillion calculations per second to 700 trillion mm -hmm. calculations per second by January of 2015. Uh, this increase in the computer will allow us to run what we call Earth system models. It's not just the atmosphere, it's the atmosphere, ocean, mm -hmm. ice, mm -hmm. which is obviously very important up here, and land models that are all coupled together okay. at higher resolution. So you need the big computers, you need the uh, science uh, that allows us to run these models and run them in a parallel mode and that they're coupled so that the ocean effects could affect the atmosphere and vice versa, mm -hmm. as an example. Uh, and then the global observations are absolutely critical and um, over the last 20, 30 years they've become more dependent upon the satellite systems um, and especially the uh, polar orbiting satellites which help drive the, uh, the observations needed for those models whether they be atmospheric observations, land, ice observations. Um, we're driving more and more of that from satellites now that feed into these models and produce forecasts with extended lead times now, out, you know, for extreme events especially, we're, we're seeing a much improved forecast out in the four, five, six, seven, and even eight day range, which is, gets us back to Weather Ready Nation because if you're going to get ready for a storm event, you want those consistent forecasts approaching that event from day seven, six, five, four, three, mm -hmm. so you can take the actions several days in advance that can help mitigate the property loss and, and, and protect uh, your livelihood. Okay, all part of the mission of protecting life and property. Dr. Uccellini, thank you for joining us today. We really appreciate it. And speaking to Alaskans and sharing how the National Weather Service is working for Alaska and the nation. Wish you safe travels around the 49th. Enjoy your time here, sir. And for Alaska Weather Facts, I'm meteorologist Dave Snyder. And now, marine weather around Alaska. Welcome back. Looking at today's sea ice analysis, uh, about the same as yesterday here. Uh, ice free out across the Chuck Sea Sea and in toward just north of the Point Barrel area. And not a lot of change, but maybe 10 more miles of uh, retreating here back to the north a little bit uh, over the next five days. Marine forecast northwest of 10, south coast of the Panhandle, sea's just five feet. Uh, West northwest of 15 up to the north. South winds 20 in the afternoon for Northern Link Canal, the way southwest 15, Stevens Passage, south 10 for Clarence Strait with three foot seas. I'll look for Sunday, west winds 15 knots here, four to five foot seas for all the coastline. Southeast 15 for Clarence Strait, south at the same speed there for Stevens Passage. A little windier, Lynn Canal, south 20, sustained four foot seas, gust, gale force gust, 35 knots. And for Prince William Sound, light westerlies tomorrow, light west-southwesterlies here for all of the North Gulf Coast at 10 knots, so a three to four foot seas. Southwest at 10 for the Barren Islands, three foot seas, same thing for Kamishak Bay. Southern Cook Inlet, south at 15 in the afternoon, southwest 15 in the afternoon for Northern Cook Inlet with seas just three feet. And for Sunday, south winds 10 to 15 here for Cook Inlet, uh, southwest staying light for Kamishak Bay. And, uh, Southwest at 15 for the Barren Islands, right up along all of the North Gulf Coast. Pretty uniform wind pattern coming up on Sunday there. Winds stay light in Prince William Sound. And for Bristol Bay, east winds at 10, turn northeast here on the Bering Sea side of the peninsula. But on the south side, east winds 25 knots. Small craft advisories there, but Castle Cape to Sitkanak down to 15 out of the southeast. Southwest 15 for Kodiak, Shelikoff Strait. And then for Sunday, light northwesterlies for Bristol Bay, north 15, north side of the peninsula, south side, northeast 25, small crafts continue there through Sunday with uh, seas up to 11 feet, east 20 from Sitkanak to Castle Cape with eight foot seas, light winds for Shelikoff Strait, south 15, east side of Kodiak Island, six foot seas. Western Aleutians uh, in the afternoon, latter part of the afternoon, coming up to 20 knots out of the southeast with that next front farther off to the west. Otherwise, uh, northeast 15. Northerlies 20 to 25, Adak and Atka, windier, small craft advisories 
Uh, for all of Fox Islands, uh, north to northeast, 25 to 30 knots, strongest on the Pacific side of the islands, with seas highest there as well, 12 to 14 feet. And for Sunday, northerly is 20 to 30 knots there. Uh, for Alaska Island, 20 to 25 over toward Nikolsky. Seas uh, 10 to 12 feet in the Pacific side of the islands and just 5 to 7 on the north side back to uh, Adak and Atka. Otherwise, uh, 15 to 20 knots for the winds out of the north. And for the western Aleutians, west 15, kind of pretty light here from Adak over to probably Kiska, picking up to 25 out of the east for the western zone and seas at 8 feet. For the southwest coast tomorrow, Saturday, light winds out of the northeast at 10 with two-foot seas, north 15 for the Pervilofs, northwest 15, St. Matthew Island. Small craft advisories for St. Lawrence Island, north winds 25 knots, eight-foot seas, but just southwest at five in Norton Sound. And then on Sunday, northwest 15 there for the sound, north 20, a little lighter for St. Lawrence Island. Northwesterly is 15 to 20 knots here for the southwest coast with seas running three to four feet and north winds only 15 for the Pervilofs, four foot seas, same forecast out for St. Matthew Island. And on up to the north for tomorrow, westerlies, 30 knots here for the, uh, well, brisk wind advisories all across central and eastern Arctic coast there, 25 to 30 knots, and uh, small craft advisories west 25 for the uh, western coast, and then uh, Cape Beaufort to Cape Thompson, northwest to 20, and then back into small craft advisories from Cape Thompson to uh, Wales, north 25, seven foot seas. And then for Sunday, northerlies 20 knots from the Bering Strait up to Cape Beaufort, northwest 20 in the western coast. And small craft or <laughs> brisk wind advisories continue for the central coast all the way to demarcation point. Uh, strongest winds will be over in this area again uh, with some much higher gusts as well, especially tomorrow night and early Sunday on the east side there. Uh, but that's uh, where the strongest winds will be. And for tonight, again, uh, diminishing showers here over the eastern interior down to the Alaska Range. And then for tomorrow, here comes a snow and blow up there along the Arctic coast, heaviest on the east side, thunderstorms again along that trough in the interior. And for Sunday, uh, still kind of showery and unsettled for the Panhandle, snow eastern Arctic coast. Thanks for joining us. These forecasts are for planning purposes only. Call 1-800-WX-BRIEF for a formal pre-flight briefing. Always file a flight plan before you go fly. The U.S. Coast Guard Auxiliary urges you to leave a float plan with a friend or the harbormaster before you go boating.